Dude, you're a little early. It's only... Oh, man. <laughs> My bad. You're on time. Let's get this show going. <clears throat> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is July 22nd. It is Monday. Now, you know what we do here. We like to focus in on a hot penny stock, at least in my opinion. And that's what this whole show is about. It's just my opinion. I don't have AI helping me. I definitely don't have any special skills. And I don't have any magical abilities. So we are just talking about my opinion, which is to say, do your own due diligence behind me. Now, I do post a lot of information about penny stocks. I trade penny stocks every single day. And I'm constantly looking for a hot penny stock, a stock that has potential to make us money. Now, normally I find my hot penny stocks by looking at the charts first. I just think it's easier and quicker. I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time. And pretty much at a glance, I can tell if a chart looks like it's ready to run. Well, when I find a chart that has heat, then I go rummaging around through that company's press releases and filings looking for some hot information. You get some hot news to match that hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you on a regular basis. And sticking to that, today we are looking at ticker ASNS, Actalis Networks. Now, people have been watching this stock off and on over the last two months for good reason. She's been hot. She's had no less than five huge bounces over the last seven weeks, which correlate to news. Every time she comes out with the news press, it's big. And boom, we get an explosion on the chart. Well, we've got an interesting chart pattern right now. It's in a wedge. The highs have been getting lower and the lows have been getting higher. So we've got this wedge right now and it's gotten right down to the tip like toothpaste. And we're going to squeeze it out. Well, she dipped out of it. Surprisingly, we weren't expecting it. She dipped out down not where we really wanted her to go. But she landed on a very strong support as well as a 200-day SMA, which is solid ground, a perfect launch pad, perfect timing, because we've got some hot catalysts coming up here in just a few weeks. So, ASNS, she finished today at a buck 58, and she was up uh, one and a quarter percent today. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ. Penny stocks on the major exchange have a host of benefits you're not going to get on the OTC. First off, they're free to trade. You don't have to pay to buy your shares. You don't have to pay to sell your shares. Plus, you get to trade pre-market, aftermarket. Folks, there's a lot of money to be made in those periods of time. You never get that opportunity with OTC stocks. There is a lot more money and a lot more volume on the major exchanges. If you're going to be trading a stock, that's where you want it to be. And last but not least, there's a lot more rules up on the major exchange. Folks, we like that. That keeps the companies honest. That minimizes our risk levels. So what is ASNS all about? Well, let's start right here. This is a pretty decent description. The company engages in developing and marketing access broadband equipment for copper and fiber networks in North America, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and the Asia Pacific. In case you couldn't tell, they're global. They provide networking solutions for Internet of Things, IOT projects, enabling applications in smart cities, smart campuses, airports, military bases, smart roads, smart railways, and smart utilities. Now, folks, we don't do a lot of talking about the Internet of Things, IOT, but it was the buzz back when 5G was coming out. Because that's what 5G was all about, was connecting machines to machines, which is the Internet of Things, by eliminating the slowest part, the middle man, us, man, literally, just have machines talking to machines. And the world is still evolving into that technology right now, big time. And this company is smack dab in the middle of all of that globally. The company's portfolio consists of hybrid hardware and hybrid software, all to the end of cyber protection capabilities, which unlock the hidden value of networks delivering connectivity for deployment. It services providers of telecommunication services and enterprises, as well as resellers of its products. Now, just a little while ago in May, they are closing a deal right now they tell us right here within 60 days 
This came out May 31st, so we're overdue for a news press or a filing. This deal is not finalized yet, but it's right there. We're waiting for it to close. Eilis provides an update on the binding term sheet signed with Actilis Networks. The company recently signed a binding term sheet with Actilis Networks to acquire 61% stake of Eilis's industrial subsidiary, Quality Industrial Core, ticker QIND. QIND was one of Eilis's subsidiaries. Eilis is on the OTC, ticker ILUS. They spun out two subsidiaries, Quality Industrial Core, QIND, which this company now owns 60, or will own 61% of, and the other one was a, uh, Emergency Response Technologies, ticker SAML, which this company, Actilis, is looking at. They're really looking at it, but they haven't done anything with it yet, but they are considering it. But at this point in time, we are just waiting for this deal to close. They tell us here, after the transaction is completed, QIND will operate as the industrial subsidiary of ASNS, working alongside of the company, which will function as the technology subsidiary of ASNS. ASNS will consolidate the financials of both of its subsidiaries. Now, to give you a little more perspective and insight to what QIND is about, Quind, whose operations are based out of Dubai, United Arab Emirates, designs, manufactures, and supplies solutions for the critical infrastructure, industrial, and energy sectors. Check this out. Its operating business reported $11 million in revenue in 2023 and is projected substantial growth in 2024. Now, as you're going to see, we have revenues in this company, ASNS, but they're not great. We could use more. How about a few million more? That's what we're talking about. The first quarter of this year, Quinn's revenues were approximately 3.1 million. We just missed that one, but we have a financial coming out here in three weeks. Their second quarter financial is going to come out. And I don't know if this is going to close in time, folks, but the bottom line here is when this closes, all of these revenues, well, not all of them, 61%, come over to this company as well. Now, jumping into the news. I have gone all the way back, and it isn't that far, actually, to May 31st. We've got a lot of news here, and I'm only going to actually dive into one of them, believe it or not, but I do want to highlight a lot of it here. They are doing a lot of business in this last quarter, and as I said, their revenues have been low. So to see all of this money starting to pour in is exciting to me. This is the one we just were looking at. Eilis provides an update on the term sheet for Actilis for getting QIND. Then at the beginning of June, the company received new orders to supply three military bases, continuing their momentum with the U.S. military. The company also cashed in some warrants. Well, they didn't cash them in. People who own warrants cashed them in. We had $3 million here and $2.2 million up here. Warrants are coupons that people buy. It's stock. You can trade them as stock, but if you hang on to them, you can use them as coupons in the future, three, five years down the road. It allows you the right to buy a share of stock at a guaranteed discounted price. It may say you can buy a share at a buck, and it told you this way back when the stock was 50 cents, but now, four years later, it's at $22, and you're allowed to buy it at a buck. That's why people like warrants. Well, they just had a bunch of them turned in and they made $5.25 million. The company got to keep that. But every time a warrant is exercised, it gives birth to a new share. And basically, we got 2 million more shares that will be added to the float from this. Then mid-June, we have a partnership between the company and Kerasoft, a major U.S. best based IT software and service company to expand access for its cyber secure immediate deployment IoT connectivity to the US government agencies. This is a company that does just that. I do believe this is the news for that. It is. Today the company announced a partnership with Carsoft Technology, the trusted government IT solutions provider. Under the agreement, 
Carsoft will serve as Actalis's public sector distributor, making Actalis hybrid fiber connectivity solutions available to federal, state, and local agencies and educational organizations in the U.S. and Canada through Carsoft's reseller partners and NASA solutions for enterprise-wide procurement. Carasoft is highly respected in the public sector and has a strong network of resellers and integrators who can benefit from our hybrid fiber approach to enable instant and secure connectivity for their customers. So they got a reseller that has a lot of connections. Jumping back to that news, <laughs> there we go. Um, the company just regained compliance. We are up here at $1.58. They were under a dollar for too long. They were given a warning. We had to bid the price up over a dollar, stay over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. They did that. They got themselves out of that problem. Then at the end of June, the company expands global footprint with orders from cyber-hardened IoT networking solutions in airports across Japan, India, and Poland. At the end of uh, June, they also expanded their international footprint with over $300,000 worth of new orders from the Italian National Transportation. They also got an order from a major German municipal utilities company. Now, just so you know, when we're looking at the chart, this is June 27th, that's June 28th. We'll see if there's bounces there. We've got one here for June 24th. On July 10th, the company receives $260,000 worth of orders from major mid-Atlantic U.S. County traffic system modernization. On the 15th of this month, the company renewed nearly $1.5 million from a major North American customer. And then today, the company receives over $150,000 in new military orders. Now, I don't know how much that is, folks. We've got a whole bunch of orders here they give us prices on, and we've got a couple orders here they don't. The bottom line is we see a lot of revenues coming in just in the last quarter. These are all building up, plus we have QIND, which has their own revenues. That should be closing right around the corner. So when it comes to their revenues, this has a chance of exploding in the next 30 days. The next financial should show us something. And when this closes, all of their revenues, or at least 61% of them, swing over to this company. So I see a lot of catalysts here. And people watch this company. As you're going to see on the charts, when these big pieces of news come out, she jumps on the chart. You want to play those. Get in on the run up. Sell while she's running up. Get out before she starts falling. She's going to come back down to earth. Next time a piece of news comes out, you know what to do. Rehash, rehash, rehash. All right, let's go take a look at the relative volume for the company. A lot going on. Wow, I was going to refresh my page, but that's it. Okay, over the last 30 days, she's been doing like 6.2 million shares as an average over the last 30 days. Today, she only did 704,000. That's a huge discrepancy, especially considering she went up. So, as I like to do, I've jumped on over here to Yahoo Finance, jump into their historical data. This gives you every day's activities. So you can see the open, the highs and the lows, the close, and the volume. And I always like to look at the volume. The average, that's a number in the middle. There's a lot of high numbers and a lot of low numbers. Well, were the high numbers yesterday or at the end of the month? I want to see. So looking at her volume here, we can see she's on a low spot right now. It was back on the 15th. She jumped to 8 million with a million on each side of her there. Coming down a little further. Oh, look at there. On June 28th, we had 71 million shares come in. I mean, that's a huge jump from 2 million. Then she dropped down to 5. June 18th, we were at 51 million. And look at this, folks. 89 million on June 5th. And look at our price. On June 4th, she was 45 cents. So just about six, seven weeks ago, she was at 45 cents. The very next day, she opened at 371, but she hit a high of 460. 
Wow, a thousand percent run on all that volume right there. And then it just dwindled away, popped back in at 51, off and on, off and on. So this is a stock you got to watch. When volume comes in, she does act wild. All right, coming on back to our stock information. Wow, we have a low outstanding share count. We have 3.3 million, but those warrants have been added in. This only goes up to May. I think we have to add in 2 million more. So that's going to give us close to 5.3 million shares, which isn't bad at all. <laughs> if you're under 100 million shares on your float, you've got a decent float. If you're under 10 million, you've got a low float. If you're under 5 million, you've got a super duper low float. And that's what we got here, folks. So when she starts selling 80 million shares a day and you've only got 5 million outstanding, who knows what the float is, you're looking at every share selling roughly 16 times over in the same day. That can cause what looks like a short squeeze, but it is truly a supply and demand issue. There's just not enough shares to go around for all the people that want to buy shares. You want to get in early before those heavy runs. Market cap for the company, remembering she's probably got 5 million now times a buck and a half. That would give us about 7.5 million, right? Taking a look at her financials. Now, her financials aren't bad, but we want them better, right? Over the last four years, they've been falling. Not really falling, but for the first three years, she was hovering around eight and a half million. I know it's millions because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. At the end of 2023, though, we fell down to five and a half million. We dropped three million, and most of that three million came out of the profits. Looking at her quarterlies, again, she's falling. We are falling. Our last quarter, we were down to three quarter million and we got to keep less than a quarter million of it. So we need help on our revenues right now. So we've got a reseller. We've got a lot of new deals coming in. We have uh, a closing of Quinn, which could bring in a lot of money and a lot more business because they're over in Dubai. Take a look at the balance sheet for the company. We got to bring those three zeros over here too. So looking at what we call bank, we got about 2.6 million in the bank. Total assets for the company, 10 and a half million. Total liabilities is higher, ah, 12 million. So we are holding some stockholder deficit. We, the shareholders are 1.6 million. So to have a price of a buck 58, that's a pretty good price for holding stockholder deficit. Taking a look at the disclosures, what we got here? I do believe these are already looked at in the news, but we'll highlight them. Material definitive agreement. This is the warrants. We had about 1 million shares thrown out there because of those. And another one here. This goes all the way back in June. Disclosure channels to disseminate information. Um, expand international footprint with over $300,000 with a new order from Italy. We covered that too. So there you go, folks. We've got a lot of catalysts that just keep coming. And the company gets big bounces and then comes back down, but not as low as she was before. She keeps climbing, but she bounces, comes down, bounces. So she's got this wedge going, and I think she's ready to pop. And if we can get the financials or the closing of Quind, I think both are good news, and both could get this stock to rocket. Let's go take a look at that chart. Any guesses where we're at? Ooh, you're quick. <laughs> yes, we are at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're going to chart ticker ASNS, Actalis Networks. I've got her opened up to a one-day, one-year chart, which is a very interesting chart. Looking at our 200, you can see she was in a downtrend for a very long time. And right here, when all the activity broke out, she has not only gone flat, but her 200 is starting to climb now. Not only that, but every other SMA has already crossed the 200 and they're all climbing. Now, what's interesting here is she really wasn't in a downtrend all this time. She stopped her downtrend way back here in August of 2023 and just went sideways for many a month before she took this crouch before the pounce. Maybe 
She fell to a 52-week low here of 36 cents and then jumped out of the clear blue up to $4.60. You're looking at 2,800% gains, something like that. Don't quote my math. Then she came back down and she started doing all these wild bounces, and we'll get a better look at that on the other time charts. But as you can see, we've had a lot of activity on our osculators. They were pretty much dead back here. So we have life in the picture. Let's come on down to our six month, four hour view. So we still got that 52 week high and low. She has been flat with some activity you could have caught on certain days, but all of this is where we really want to pay attention. Now I'm going to zoom into this area right here because I've got some lines drawn up and I'll explain what we've got here. First, I've got this top channel to my wedge. You can see our highs have been getting lower and lower and lower. They're falling. You can see our lows are coming up higher and higher and higher. So we've got this wedge. I know it's backwards. <laughs> we got this wedge cre being created like a tube of toothpaste. And right here, she actually fell out of it. Now, what I want you to pay attention to, every time she fell back down here, news came out, she popped, folks right up to the top of that channel, came back down, not as low as she came down before, down to another area, and then jumped again on another news press, fell down to this strong support that I've got here at about a buck 56, jumped again on another news press. Now, what day is this? This is the 10th. So when we come down to the lower time frames, we have the 18th here. I do believe we had news on that day, the 27th, and the 28th, yes, we did talk about the 27th and the 28th. Between those two pieces of news, she ran from a buck 45 up to 275 just in that one day period. It was two days, but it covered 24 hours. Our volume is not really too excitable. We had lots of volume back here on these spikes. The volume comes in on the spikes. We saw that on Yahoo. Even some smaller spikes here, the volume comes in. But regularly, we don't have a lot of volume here. Our oscillators, they're showing an attempt at starting to recover right now. They're all coming down to the bottom of their cusp and starting to turn up just now. As you can see, right in this area, let me zoom in on that. In her channel, talking about the wedge channel, the blue line, she is bouncing on this support right there. She has fallen down to that support and to her 200-day SMA. Everything is right here. Our support, our 200-day SMA, and our channel for our wedge. And she is on top of all of it, layer upon layer upon layer. It's solid, folks. It's really strong. She can build up a very tall monument here without worrying about anything shifting. I'm expecting a breakout here. Now, she has taken a dip. But this could easily be the crouch before the pounce. Now, I've got a resistance up here of $2.97. I think that's a strong one coming all the way back here. And the reason I've got that line, it is dead center of this big run right here. From the bottom to the top, believe it or not, that's the center. That is the 50% mark if we were to grab our Fibonacci. She is way below that. She has a tendency right now to work towards that and get on top of it. If she can get on top of that, she moves into the positive zone, the green area, not the red area, and she'll actually get more power up here. But down here, she's actually breaking out if she can get on top of that blue channel for her wedge. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. A closer look at our wedge, right? You can see she's dipping underneath the strong support just a little bit before she takes these big bounces. A little dip, a big jump, a little dip, a big jump. Right now, she's taking a little bit of a dip, maybe a big jump. Well, there's only so much room to be jumping now. So sooner or later, I'm expecting her to jump out of this wedge and start to run like a dog out of the pen. Woohoo! It's all over the place, and she is sitting in a beautiful zone right here. Now, all of our SMAs on our hourly chart are coming down. We got our 200 over our head. But if you look, you can see they're all starting to turn right now. now. We have to wait for that turn. 
when they start to turn up, a draft is going to be created here and it'll suck that price right up. And that's normally when you'll see this thing start to run. Our oscillators are interesting. We have a low PPO here, percentage price oscillator. It is a lot like your MACD. You read them the same, but the percentage price oscillator only uses a percentage of the price, where the MACD uses the full price. Well, this is falling with the price. This one is climbing against the price, against the PPO. That's called a divergence. In this case, folks, the divergence is coming down, squeezing, 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 like we have up here, but we shouldn't really see that. What's going to happen? A reversal. It has to snap back into place, and the point is going to open up and allow volume to come in, and that's when we should see a jump in this thing. When this turns up and this turns with it, this should all turn with it. We have a very strong setup here for a leap. Let's come on down to our five day. Now let's check out the five day 15 minute. It's easier to read. So here we are at a high five days ago, $2.32. She has fallen down to this low of a buck 43, gotten back up on strap on top of that strong support of a buck 57. And she is consolidating strong right now, folks, sideways, sideways, sideways. And you see green bars and red bars buying and selling, buying and selling. This is called the accumulation, consolidation period, where people know something's coming and they know this is a good price to buy. So people are picking up shares at a decent price. Now, right now, let's see here, we had a dip the other day. She came down to that low, big drop, came back up. Our 200 day haul is still purple. It is just about ready to start climbing and turn blue. This is my perfect setup. I like to see my 200 haul up underneath the price, which is up underneath the 200. What I expect to see here, this is just my thoughts. This is going to drop as soon as this turns blue, you know, right around that time. Once it starts climbing the 200 haul, this will dip down to it. That'll be the crouch before the pounce and it'll use the 200 haul as a catapult and it'll push off of it and go right through everything to the 200 and in most cases right through the 200. So I like the setup here. This consolidation period tells me something is about ready to happen and considering she's had news on top of news on top of news about all these new contracts, all this new revenue, the next financial should be good. Not just decent, good. And if they close the deal for QIND anytime here soon, oh, Houston, we are ready for launch. I'm strapped in. Let's go. Let's go. There's a lot of information you can get about this company. Go back even further. See how much more business they've had this year. You'll be impressed. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.